Hey guys, so tonight I got something real unique, something that I've definitely never done before. Uh, so y'all remember when I made this Game Boy Advance, uh, this is using the original Funny Playing IPS LCD and uh, one of my main criticisms with this kit was with this game in print, well technically it was Pokemon Emerald and this is Pokemon Ruby, but uh, with the Pokemon games, uh, all these like kind of top-down side-scrolling games, um, you could see the the screen tearing every single time you take a step, and it's just it's really uh, I don't know nauseating. It's probably harder to tell on camera. I don't know. It's it's not looking very good through the on my phone screen here. Or I guess it is looking pretty good on my phone screen. But whatever, that's not the point. Uh, anyway, today I got this here in the mail. Well, actually, again, I didn't get it today, but whatever. Keep getting sidetracked. So this here is the V2 version of the same kit that I have here. Uh, supposedly, the difference is that this one eliminates all the screen tearing. Uh, but it is otherwise the same kit. And unlike the first one that came in that cardboard box, this comes in this nifty little plastic case. And once you got that open, you have a 3D printed bracket that will help you center the screen within the console. You have a centered lens. The last one was printed off-center because apparently that was like easier, but I don't really get it because you still have to do a bunch of trimming just to make it fit anyway. Um, this is, of course, a centered lens. I probably won't be using this, and you'll see why in a bit, but I'm super happy that they included it. I even bought a few because I kind of forgot. Um, you got the ribbon itself. Largely the same thing, a little bit different layout, but, you know, is what it is. Uh, you get the screen, which is the exact same LCD that was uh, that shipped with the V1 kit. So if you actually do have a V1 kit uh, and you ordered through Funny Playing's website, you can order just the ribbon itself for 15 bucks and then just swap out the ribbon, leave your LCD installed. And that should supposedly fix the uh, screen tearing issues. And then last but not least, we have this uh, cut adhesive. Um, this is to hold the LCD within the shell itself. I installed it on this one in like part two or part three or whatever the hell, however the hell many parts I made. Uh, oops. Um, I will probably be using this again. And this case, unfortunately, it is too small for a Game Boy Advance. That'd be pretty neat if they did. They do sell a Game Boy Advance size case. It's only like three bucks. It's the same thing as this, just big enough for a Game Boy Advance. I do recommend picking one up. They're actually pretty nice. But if you have a Game Boy Micro, it is the perfect size for that. Or, since I already had a few of these, Game Boy Camera sized. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. I'm I'm just gonna leave this Game Boy as is. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with it. It's it's good enough. Um, I have plenty of unmodified Game Boys that I can modify so I think I'm going to do so now before I get into this uh, there is one thing I want to address um, well several things god I'm on a roll tonight um, first this is my Game Boy I can do whatever the hell I want with it second this Game Boy was already broken and already modified when I got it all right, so yeah, uh, you'll see why I'm saying this in just a second here. And three, um, this Game Boy wasn't worth much in the first place. I only bought it for like 25 bucks, and uh, I think actually modding it will increase the value. Uh, this is a limited edition Celebi console. I think I'm going to backlight it. Uh, when I got it, it didn't work. It, of course, works fine now, but there's no batteries in it, so I can't really show that off. It has the wrong start and select buttons in it, but that's because when I was fixing this, I didn't have any regular buttons, but I have some now. 
I just threw them in the battery compartment because I figured I'd be taking this thing apart at some point in the future. And, uh, well, I wasn't wrong, was I? But before I actually get into this, just to show you, works fine. I don't even have to clean the power switch. I, uh, the latch was broken off on the battery compartment, so I drilled it out and epoxied some magnets in, and that's what holds this on. It works pretty great. But before we get into tearing this apart, again, shut up about it. It's my Game Boy. I can do what I want. Uh, let's do some testing. So, just naturally, because I gotta know. I'm a curious person. I have here a perfectly normal, this is what they all look like, Game Boy Advance SP console. Um, it is a 001, not a 101. Let me turn off these lights so you can see a little bit better. And, uh, you know, it works fine, to be honest. It uh, I, I took it apart because the screen that was in it was not very happy. But um, it is what it is. I want to test it out, see how it works uh, with this new kit, if it works at all. Uh, but first thing, because I am naturally a curious person, as I have probably mentioned, I want to see what kind of power this thing uses. So I'm going to hook it up to my power supply here. Despite being the wrong color, this is the positive. And this one is the negative. So, if we, oh, got to turn that on. So that's set to about 3.7 volts. I don't know what it was set to. Um, oh, that's annoying. I don't know what I used. I, I tested my last one at, but it is what it is. We'll test this one at 3.7. So just on the main screen, pulling about 20 milliamps with the light on. The light off, it dropped down to zero, which makes no sense. I'm guessing my tool is just very inaccurate on that low range. So let's test it with a game. I got Pokemon Ruby right here. And even though there's no speaker plugged in, the volume is all the way up. And the light's red because this power switch needs cleaning. But as long as I don't touch it or clean it, it should be consistent enough. Yeah, yeah, I know. Alright, so, in, where am I, Old Dale Town? Again, 25 milliamps, and then with the light off, drops down to zero. Okay, well, <laughs> that's wonderful, but okay. Let's flip that off. Get this screen out of here. And this is what I made my uh, other SP with this thing. Uh, this has a funny playing IPS kit in it. Um, you, I, if this works, I suppose there's no reason you can't really make another kit, you know, make your own kit with one of these. But there is a an SP version coming out soon-ish. I think it ships in like the next couple weeks. Um, that. That one's probably a lot easier to uh, use this kit with. Instead of having to make this fit, that one should just plug in. But out of curiosity, we gotta see if it works anyway, right? I can even plug this stupid thing in. feels wrong, but it's probably fine. Hey, look at that. So we went from 20, 25-ish. Oh, it reset. That's probably not good. I wonder if that was me hitting the power switch or something else happened.
All right, so yeah, we went from 25 to 99. So that is a fourfold increase. And of course, the light button <laughs> resets the console. Uh, I wonder if that's supposed to happen. Probably not. Honestly, I, I, I think it's the power switch. I think if I clean this thing, I'd have better results. Yeah, light button does nothing. As expected, I guess. I mean, it's not hooked up to anything anymore. But there we go. It does work. You can use this. And for those curious, I see zero screen tearing. Let me bring that in a little. Sorry, it's off to the side. There's not a whole lot I can do about that, but it does look significantly better. So let's. I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed in the uh, GBA. All right. Turn these lights back on so I can see. And we'll test this in the GBA as well, but let me just try and get this put away for now. I gotta put that screen in there eventually, but that's a problem for another day. Y'all want me to make a video on that? I think I've reshelled an SP before and this is basically the same thing. I mean, not that I'm opposed to making duplicate videos, but, you know, just, just saying. Okay. So, let's get started. So like any normal GBA, seven screws, one is a small black Phillips in the battery compartment, the rest are the six tri-point, or tri-wing, I uh, keep getting confused. clean it is on the inside. I've definitely never taken this apart before. Okay. I'm just trying to get these screws together so I don't lose them. Or rather so I don't lose one of them. That way I can just lose all of them simultaneously. Somehow that'll, uh, that'll make my life easier. that off to the side. Set these off to the side. Yeah, I'll unplug that. And three, yeah, three more Phillips screws. Well, this console has three screws. I've seen some that only come with two screws. I'm assuming that's just a cost savings measure on Nintendo's part. It's kind of, kind of astounding to think about, like, how much does one screw cost, right? It's got to be fractions of a penny, especially when you're buying them probably thousands at a time. But that's just how many freaking consoles they were making, you know? That they could go through thousands of screws and just delete one of them and still save a few dollars. Oh, man. Drop the button, and I almost caught it. Okay, I'm gonna take this out before I lose it. Don't forget to put this back in. In fact, remind me to put it back in. I'm gonna pop this screen out. It's not the first time I've taken this screen out. I'm gonna take this.
piece of out too. I'm gonna gently lay it down on the screen so that I have a place to keep it. Or at least that's what I'm trying to do. Eh, good enough. All right. I'm going to set this aside for the moment. We'll come back to that. We got to do some science. Okay. I'm going to take this same game. Where did I put my power thingy? Right there, right at my side. We can test this on 3.7, but I would rather test it on uh, 3. or 2.4. And I am working on a new revision of this thing so that I don't have to use a plastic spudger just to adjust this. Kind of forgot the first time around. Didn't really work out so good. All right. So, with the volume up, on the original screen, this thing is pulling, is this a 40 pin model? I think so. I don't think it makes that big of a difference, but in Old Dale Town, pulling about 80 milliamps at 2.4 volts. Now remember, even though the SP was only pulling like 25 milliamps. That was also pulling 25 milliamps at 3.7 volts. So that was almost twice as much power still. Or, well, no, it was, it was still less power, but I mean, if it were the same, like if they were both pulling 20 milliamps, the SP would be pulling twice as much power because of the volts. When you're comparing power at different volts, you should uh, convert your units over to watts, which is volts times amps. Oh, I forgot to put the game in. All right. Nope. And that just shorted on something. So don't do that. <laughs> And of course, this is the default brightness. I'll do one more test um, when I get this thing more assembled. We'll crank the brightness up and see how high it goes. But we're pulling, oh, I tap it and it changes. That's cool. Uh, we'll call that, it's going up between 180 and 210. So let's just call it 190 versus the 80 that it was pulling before. Uh, so it is, again, a little over twice the battery. That, Assuming that trend is linear and scales pretty much the same everywhere, uh, that means if you were getting 20 hours out of a pair of AA's, prepare to get 10 hours. Or less. I can't get this stupid thing out. Alright, set this aside. Alright, I'm going to unplug this before I rip something off. And now we gotta drop this in here. Now if I recall correctly, we gotta trim off this whole wall here. 
and then trim all of that flat. This bracket that they give you that I just dropped. Of course it goes onto the screen before you put it in here, but I'm just putting it in here to get an idea of the fit here. So yeah, we need to take out almost that whole wall. Okay, so changed up the scenery a little bit. Um, I was about to discuss how I was going to do all of the work on the Dremel this time, um, but camera decided that uh, it was time to take a break. So here we are. Uh, I'm at the Dremel platform. Uh, this is just a regular rotary tool. I have it in like a drill press thing. So I have a handle here. Uh, so I can lower and raise it, and I have a standard, well I say standard, but it's not really standard. I have a um, flat end uh, milling bit in here. I forget the size, it doesn't really matter because I'm just going to be freehanding it. And I put uh, painter's tape on the base of my uh, unit, and then painter's tape on the GBA shell so I can just slide it around and I don't have to worry about scratching it up too much. But, oh no! I'll, I forgot the Sharpie. Let me go grab the Sharpie. I'll be right back. It was literally right next to the shell and I forgot to grab it. Anyway, I just want to kind of show what we need to cut. So we need to flatten out this, these parts. And you need to do, you need to flatten out this part for any backlight mod. But for this kit in particular, you also need to remove this wall along here, up to, I think, about here-ish. So it's a lot of cutting, but thankfully it's easy cutting. So uh, headphone users, give you a few seconds here, but this thing is a little bit loud. So that's that first part. I uh, kind of wandered off a little bit, but I was just trying to make it smooth. Um, next, I need to take out this wall. And it would probably be easier to do this by hand, I think. But fuck it, what's the worst that could happen? Make sure you wear your proper protective equipment which involves safety glasses and I'm not making too much dust but you still don't want to breathe in any of this junk. Okay. Also I forgot to mention tool holding or part holding is very important. I'm neglecting it in this case because I have no other option but uh, don't be me. Be smarter than me. Advice would be good.
do some cleanup, but that's okay. Took out pretty much the entirety of that wall. Let me grab the screen real quick. And the bracket. This goes on here like that. And this will fit in here. In theory. Now we can install this backwards, can't we? Oh, I see what's going on. There's a little bit of... Hi, bud. No, I already fed you. Okay. So, oops. Flipped out. I think we still need to clean up a little bit up here and a little bit down here. Because it's not fitting with the bracket. careful on, on your trimming up here. I think I'll be good either way for a reason that I'll show you that we'll get to in a minute. But you want to be careful because if you trim off this entire wall, you lose out on uh, the little spring for the R button. All right, Dremel time. sliver. I think we should be good. I lost the tool. Oh, there it is. Man, if it's not in my hand the second I set it down. Yeah, there we go. I think that'll fit. I think I just need to clean this up now with some files or or a knife or something. Got to clean up all the little rough edges like right here. Um, but I think this will do it. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here and I got to, I have to um, somehow remove my camera from this mount because I glued it in and uh, <laughs> I'll meet you back at my desk. Okay it wasn't glued nearly as well as I thought it was which is kind of spooky but whatever. Um, so I cleaned up a little bit with the knife, uh, just final few adjustments. I had to trim just a hair on the top here so that that would fit. And then right here where the, uh, select button is just so that it would fit. But everything fits now. Oh, I can't see because there's tape on here, but I'm going to pop that out of here. Remove the tape so we can see my wonderful green shell. And then, oh, ripped it. One thing I like to use the tape for is to just try and pick up any of the leftover dust. On the lens at least. And then we should be good to go. Oh, no, just kidding. I still see some dust. Right in the corner. 
Might be worth just removing the lens entirely. Eh, no, it's fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna give this a quick wipe. All right, so the screen, be super careful when you're putting this in. This uh, connector likes to get caught on uh, the start select button thing. I mean, I suppose you could cut more off and it'll be a little bit safer, but I didn't yet. Um, so that drops in there. And then this keeps it in place. Doesn't fit too great, but whatever, that's fine. And that's how that will look. Of course, I didn't remove the uh, protective layer, but that's because I'm not quite ready to install it just yet. There we go. Um, okay. So this part, this little sliver of a wall that I left, this is for the spring on the L button. Of course, I don't think that little sliver of wall is enough, but I think when that sliver of wall is supported against the screen, I think it should be fine. If you do accidentally cut that off, like I did on my first try, there is another uh, thingy, whatever you call this, centering bracket that you can get printed out. This is from, I believe, Jelly Belly Customs. Uh, he shared the STL on the Thingiverse, and you can print that out, and it pops in the same way. It's a lot bigger, and it does not fit either, <laughs> but it should fit just fine. I think I just need to sand it down a little, but this has, um, you can see up here, it has that little bit sticking out for the uh, L button. I'm not going to use it because this looks like it's going to require some adjustment to fit, and I don't feel like doing that adjustment. So, instead, I'm going to... I'm going to tape this bracket to the screen. I think that'll help. I'm going to... Of course, I don't have any here. I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab some tape. All right, so I'm just going to use this cheap garbage um, tape that you can pick up on AliExpress. This is for, it's supposed to be for, uh, like, attaching a uh, touch screen digitizer to a cell phone frame. Like, it's supposed to replace the factory adhesive. But it's garbage. For that, at least. I think it'll be perfectly fine for this. I'm just going to put a strip on there. Drop that in there. Stick that down. Now, looks like it needs to be cleaned a little bit better, but I'll just uh, pop the lens off. Really not concerned. Okay. This thing, I believe, goes in this way. We go on the screen first. Ugh. I'm going to... I'm just going to peel off both sides. Fuck it. I'm going to go on faith that this is just going to work. Feeling that's not true at all. I 
need to remove this side so that I can remove this side. How ridiculous is that? I think this is backwards, by the way. Whoever makes this uh, cut pattern, I think you're doing it backwards. I think it's easier to put it in the shelf first than to drop the screen in, as opposed to putting it on the screen. But what do I know? I do know I didn't trim that enough, but it's okay. I trimmed it enough for the screen, just not for... this sticky gasket. Oh, that's awkward. It is backwards. I'm talking mad shit and I'm doing it wrong. It's okay though, because I'll get it, and then you guys can do it right the first time. Now, another thing you should do that I did not do, um, you do need to trim the interior bezel a little bit, because the viewing area on this new screen is larger than the uh, original bezel and you can you can tell just by where this sticky gasket covers and where it does not cover as in like you see how there's uh, see how there's this empty area right here at the bottom on the side here Now, if you ever have to remove this screen, um, good luck. <laughs> this is the best advice I can offer you. I don't know how that will ever come out in one piece. Okay, so that's the hard part, I think. Drop the buttons in. Of course I'm going to be wiring up brightness control, though. So I'm probably uh, skipping a step. Oops, B. So with these start select buttons, this they still fit just fine. You just have to be a little bit careful when putting them in. They won't go in as easily because of the guide holes I'm missing, but they do go in. Okay. But I'm going to remove them for the time being, because we've got to put this in. Snaps on there. That fits in there.
And again, I don't... I didn't do this purposefully. It kind of worked out that way on accident. I'm doing a 40-pin 40, 40 install again. If you were doing the 32-pin install, you'd want to fold this down like that, and then fold this like that. I'm not going to be doing either of these because I need this connector. And I need to leave this one be. I think... Yeah, that'll be fine just sitting there. It's not going to short on anything. Now, if we want to do the um, brightness control, which, of course, I want to do brightness control. we got to get some wires going here. So you have four pads here, LR, select, and ground. Uh, the ground pad you don't need to worry about. Like if I plug this in, oof, if I uh, actually get it in the hole there. There we go. That's my sheets in. Okay. Flip that over. I just want to test something. Make sure I'm actually right on this assumption. So I'm at multimeter in continuity mode, which means when these touch, it's going to show the resistance, which in this case, across the two pins, or on the two probes, is one ohm. So if I put my probe on the ground here and a ground on the PCB, see how they're connected? We don't need to connect this ground to ground. It's already connected through the ribbon. So while that pad is nice to have, you can completely ignore it. You don't need to do anything with it. It's the same as the original, you just need the three buttons. Okay. So I'm going to use blue and red. So blue for select, which is over here, doi. We can make that nice and short, but I want to leave plenty of slack so that I can take this thing apart easily. Because I'm not a glutton for punishment. However much it might seem like sometimes. Strip the ends on that. And then L and R. We can probably do shorter. I'm going to do these red. I think that is, I'll give it just a little bit more slack, just in case. Yeah, it's about the same length. Right. And solder this. So I'm going to go ahead and tin these three pads. Get all that gunk off my iron. What the hell was that about? Okay. Now I'm going to tin these three pads. Oops. There we go. 
I'm going to just face all these wires the same way so that I can uh, reinforce them with a little bit of Captain so not rip those up, pads off by accident. Then I'll bend them where they need to go. And I'm just using some thin captain tape here. cover up that ground just in case. Okay. Now should be good to go. So L no L goes on this side. Because it's upside down. R on this side. Select it goes in the middle. Give or take. Noise. Okay. Drop this in and I'm gonna screw it down. before I screw it up. And I'm going to take a quick break before my camera decides I need to take a break. So, I'll be back in a Jeff. Okie dokie. So, and I just realized the problem with my plan of screwing this down. I need to solder that select button first. Because there is no solder joint on the back. Unlike the L and R buttons. Why didn't you guys uh, interrupt me? Okay. I'm going to do that like this. I'm still going to run that under though. And I always forget which one's select and which one's start, so I got my meter. Frame, there we go. Good enough. Alright, so one of these is ground, probably the big pad. No? That pad? Yeah. Okay. So that is that. TP2. Yeah. Okay. So for a select, you want to use this little TP2 uh, test point down there. I'm going to need that in a sec, so I'll just throw it at my desk. What is going on here? that up because I am having iron difficulties today.
Oh my god. I'm going to tape that down too, because... I don't know. I don't like it. this over and do the install. Have all the buttons, have the LED light pipe. So now, instead of using those test points, I don't like using those test points if I can avoid it. I would much rather use something a little bit more sturdy, because those test points were never designed to be actually soldered to, just so that you could, so that when they're manufacturing this Game Boy in the factory, they can just stick the motherboard on a bed of nails and test it that way without having to like fully assemble it. Okay, I don't know how well you can see that screen. Prop it up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these buttons or one of these solder points on the button itself. These two on the bottom, these are both ground. So, I don't want to use the pin that connects to ground. So, I want to use the one on the left for the left button. And the one on the left for the right button as well. Easy enough. Now, I don't imagine that it would be different on any other consoles, but there's no particular reason why the left contact is... The actual button in the right contact is the ground. So I suppose it could be different than other consoles. So it's worth double checking if you can. I'm just tucking these wires in everywhere I can put them. All right. Last but not least, we got to plug in the actual ribbon itself. And it's probably easier to do this before you have it uh, screwed down 
but I think it's a little bit safer to do it this way. Slam the bale home. And we are done with the mod. All we have to do now is put the uh, back of the shell on. We're good to go. But instead of doing that, I'm going to plug it in. We're going to test it out. Well, I suppose you should test it out before assembling it anyway. But my point was we're going to test it in a game so we can see the brightness options. Turn that off, turn that off, turn that on, turn that on. Hey, I found the screw. <laughs> and I can see how much dirt and dust that I missed, so I'm going to have to pull this lens off. But crank this bad boy up to max brightness, you can see it's now pulling 378 ohms, or m m milliamps. And if we put it at the minimum, down to 150-ish, 160, 144. Nonetheless, this thing is stupid bright. I love it. And zero screen tearing that I can see. And one of my thingies fell off, so that's cool. Or no, it didn't. I wonder what happened. Maybe it, maybe the uh, ground one fell off enough. I don't know. I'll try it out with batteries. Let's see what happens. Maybe this console just has a penchant for crashing, or even this mod. I don't think that's the case, because every single time it's crashed, I've had my fingers all up inside the console, so... Take that how you will. Oh, let me install that screw. Oh, there it is. What do I do with oh, it's right there. Doi. This isn't sitting flat, probably because I've got wires crossing in front of a screw hole. I guess that's why I want to be careful not to make them too long, or as long as I did. But, oh well, I'll make it work. Stay, damn you. That's better. Okay.
I didn't insulate the cart reader pins on this. I don't think we need to. But might be worth consideration. Just checking all the screws because I wasn't sure if I screwed them all. If I just inserted them or if I actually torqued them. already at max brightness. Oops. Interestingly that that works better. Hold select, tap L to make it lower. Hold R, tap select to make it brighter. <laughs> Might just be my uh, select button. No, oh, that's weird. I don't know what's up with that. But let's uh, let's try something out here. Not that. They both seem to work that way, so whatever. I don't think I can get to Old Dale, but we'll just have to compare from here. And you can see the uh, screen tear in on the bottom one but not nothing on the top I would definitely say they fixed that problem uh, I don't know if there are any other problems introduced so far it looks good a lot better than this one but uh, I'll have to play with it and let y'all know. Of course, gonna have to pop this lens off because that's just awful. Oh, it, uh, I always do that. Get it all together and then realize I fucked something up. But such is life. I'm pretty happy with it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.